That would probably be the most risky thing you could do on TV now is actually smoke a cigar. Oh, yeah, it'd be horrible. Oh, my gosh. Oh, the children, they'll die. <laughs> we're creating pollution in Asia because they were completely pollution-free before we got there or something. What's the, what's the best, uh, what are the other cool 80s uh, shows or movies where there were famous guns? You think about that. So many TV Miami movies. Vice. Miami Vice. Yeah, the Bren 10 yep. in particular. Yeah. The, uh, let me think on that a minute. What were the Dirty Harry movies? Famous Guns. Well, the Model 29. Yeah. Yeah, but the they were like late 70s, but yeah, still in the same thing. So chime in. If you have an opinion about best movie guns, best TV guns, ones you'd like to see people make, <laughs> we may know a guy. <laughs> All right. Welcome in Gun Talk Live. From Orlando at the NASGW show, where a lot of manufacturers are back here introducing new products and talking with distributors and trying to sell stuff. Right, Dave? Oh, of course. <laughs> Dave Biggers with Samson Manufacturing. Howdy. And welcome him in. Um, you know, for people who don't know Samson Manufacturing, I think some people go, yeah, yeah, they have like, uh, like rails and stuff, right? But you guys do a lot. We do a lot. It's actually, we do a ton of OEM stuff. Uh, people that have may have never heard of the company, you have used the product, whether you know it or not. Making the odds stuff are extremely, for other people. Yeah. Uh, the, a lot of the gun manufacturers have been using the product for some time. And there's a really, really good chance that you've held something in your hands that would made by Samson. Right now, I know I'm going to miss at least a couple, but just for example, the, uh, the six-hour, the M400. Okay. Those have Samson handguards on them. They're yep. marked Samson. Uh Remington and Bushmaster just about to bring out some products. Okay, that, work with that you have guys. our hand guards on. Okay. Yeah, there. Uh, we did the latest version of the IDF backup site is actually ours. So hopefully those are getting well used right now. Good. Yes. But yeah. Most likely you've you've seen the product somewhere. We were one of the first companies that actually offered a hand guard that you could add pieces to or remove pieces, which was our uh, our evolution hand guard. Yeah, you guys have literally really one of the first been on the forefront of some of those evolutions of how we how we run these guns and, and the way mm -hmm. we attach stuff to it. Um, but we kind of have this cool thing sitting here that we probably should talk, talk about. Ab no, we can't <laughs> talk about that. There's a hint. Dun, 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 dun. YouTube is going to is that the right flag? Is that me. the right tune? I don't know. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was a child. There was I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you may be familiar with the classic show from the '80s, A Team. Lots of cool guns in here. Dave, what have you brought? Uh, what we have done, and it's funny the way that this came about. It all started with questions. Yeah. Uh, so I was at a one of the what was it? It was a dealer appreciation show for a distributor. Okay. Or a customer appreciation show. And I talked to the distributor and I said, is there something out there that you guys would like to see that nobody is making? Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, we really would love it if somebody did this. Well, then I went and talked to the folks at Ruger and I said, same question. Is there anything that you guys would like to see made? And it was the exact same answer. <laughs> and that's when the light bulb came on. It's like, we might want to look into that. But So in its former uh, iteration, this was a Mini 14. It is a mm -hmm. Mini 14. Yes. But what did you guys do to it? We actually recreated the old stock that was used on the TV series, the A-Team. Uh, they were also on, Ruger did a, a run of rifles. It was called the AC-556. That was actually a full auto gun. Okay. And then they were selling, I'm trying to think, it was the, the Mini-14 GB, which stood for government bayonet because they actually had a bayonet lug wow. on time. And that was, there was some political stuff that happened, and they kind of bailed out of that. Okay. But... Yeah, it's a it's a folding stock, and it's funny because usually the first question that people ask me is, it's awesome. like, you know, how close it is to the original. Well, this is the original. the uh, The metal pieces all come from exactly the same casting molds. Okay. From Ruger. Okay. They found at first they couldn't find them. We had actually already done a prototype. We had already done a prototype, and 
that was all made out of aluminum. And then I got a phone call and I said, I've got some good news and bad news. The good news is we found the, you know, the moles. And I'm like, that's awesome. But, yeah. you know, do you need us anymore? Right. And they're like, no, you're, you know, you're rolling on it. Keep going with the project. Yeah, because you're actually, thinking that they're going to just make it themselves. Yeah, because they've got, you know, it's like really what do they need us for? But they're, they're really running a ton of product out the door. Uh, a lot of their manufacturing is committed. Right. And it's like. We can do this, or and you, you guys are already working on this. You just go with that. Well, this is kind of a fun side project for yeah. them, it would yeah. be, right? But they don't have the time. So you guys took this on. So you're actually making this, and if someone has a Mini 14, uh, can they can they get this system and, and do the it? Newer model, the newer model should be drop-in. Okay. Now, I'm still, this is like one of the first five prototypes. Okay. I don't have, we're going to have to go back and figure out exactly which serial numbers will work. I'm relatively certain that the initial 180 series will probably not fit in here. Okay. Uh, the ranch rifles should be able to fit any of the newer production items. There shouldn't be any issue, but I, we should be able to get that info up on our website relatively soon. So Vanna White this for, uh, for this camera here so people can get a good look at it. Um, and kind of just talk through what you guys did, all the different elements. Obviously, folding stock. Right. You've got the folding stock. And once again, the only piece out of this is not from the original molds. We actually bought this and are machining this part because this was never a cast piece. Okay. All the rest of these metal pieces were cast pieces. So we actually got those from the Ruger molds. Okay. The, uh, you can't buy these anymore. Really? Because they were initially Bakelite. Okay. But... Ruger actually got in touch with some people. They did a mold. It's exactly the same wow. shape and everything is the original. The uh, The only way a purist is going to be able to tell the difference is because the original bake lights were a little shiny. Okay. We may even it's attempt to do flat. something about that. Right. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, you know, prototype number five. But we're actually sourcing the wood from Ruger. Okay. So they actually they found the old blueprints for that because when we first started working on this, it's like, you know, here's one original, and you <laughs> yeah. can kind of look at it and, and see what you can do. And we had made some minor changes when we came up with the all-aluminum prototype Yeah. before we had it. And it was like, oh, okay, didn't really know that it worked like that. And so we went back. About the only real thing that is different on this, the original items, they, uh, they would attach these. They would pin them. They would weld them. Okay. Then they would go back and clean the weld. Well, you're talking 70s technology, right. if not even earlier. You're able to take advantage of modern technology exactly. in some of these yeah. processes. Yeah, so we, we actually use some aerospace adhesive, okay. and it was like it's one way to try to keep the cost down because raw material cost on this is very, very expensive. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's just very expensive. It scared me because we had a point that we were trying to – a price point we were trying to reach. We got close, but it's higher than we really wanted, and it's simply – it's the raw material cost. But for people who are, you know, they love this gun, they love it from the TV show, mm -hmm. or they just like this configuration, how do they get it? And when's it going to be available? The We're aiming real, real hard to have it by SHOT Show, which is okay. January, if not beforehand. Okay. Uh, I would. We're probably going to have some of them out there before that time. Right now, my, my main thing is just continuing to source parts. I have enough castings right now that I can build X number of the stocks. Yeah. I still have to get some more wood. I still have to get some more of the grips. And there's a couple of legalities that we're still working through, but yeah. we're really pushing hard to try to have them maybe by Christmas. Cool. If okay. not beforehand. Uh, the first places that you will see these, and I've had a lot of people ask, we're probably going to do the first batches are going to be through distributors. Okay. Because they're kind of the ones that, that push this. And sure. And really showing a lot of interest. So they can add, tell their dealer about it and say, hey. You or, know. or vice versa. If you want one of these, my suggestion to you is get in touch with your dealer. Have your dealer reach out to the distributor. Yeah. Because as, as they start to unfold, it's like if I've got a distributor that's the last one to the party and yeah. I've already committed you're probably going to be waiting a while. So it's in it's in their best interest to start fishing now. Yeah. And okay. then we'll see where they're going. But that's a plan. Now, you have another version of this that yes. you're working on as well. Yeah, we're going to we're looking at doing the same thing for the 1022. <laughs> that's so cool. In fact, the I would have had samples of that here because the the grip will be the same, the the metal stock will be the same. The only thing that we're doing different is the wood. We're having to source the wood from another place, at least initially. And yeah. that may wind up, we may wind up ultimately getting that from Ruger as well. This was kind of a, 
it's not an homage. This was taking the existing product and kind of manufacturing and bringing up to date. Right. The, the 1022, with the exception of the folding piece, is actually an in-house design. It's a new idea. So, yeah. Right. And we have a different little piece to go on top. So it's going to, in a perfect world, you would have one of these. You would have a stainless steel steel 22 or right. 1022 and it would be big brother and little brother very cool so. okay how do they find out more uh you can go to our website www.samson-mfg.com all right i pity the fool that doesn't get one Oh, i know and i gotta tell you when we finally got these done it was like man i love it when a plan comes together there you go <laughs> new guns from samson if you love the A-Team, and frankly, even if you didn't even watch the A-Team, this is a cool gun. So uh, stay tuned. More coming from NASGW.